Right, here we are, unit 3.05. So this is going to be a little quiz prep. Make sure that you try each question yourself. Remember, that's what you're going to need to do. Uh, you need to be able to solve these on your own, so you might as well try. Uh, so try them yourself first, right? Figure out what you're trying to find, create a plan, you know, try and write out an equation to represent the question first um, before you, you move on. For each question, um, spend at least seven minutes on your own before you, you give up and move on. So a minimum of seven minutes. Okay. Um, for each question, write out your solution in English sentences. Okay, so write solution. That means you're explaining what it means. Right? You'll get no credit if you're just circling some random number. And then if you have questions, write down any questions. So imagine you're going through a problem and you have a question, create a little thought bubble, point to it, write your question down. If you have no questions, that means that you have a full and complete solution and everything works out and you can explain it to the class and I will have you do so. So those are the three requirements that you have. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the questions. Right, so here are the four different questions. Uh, now is a good time to go ahead and pause. And then when you're all finished, uh, you can press play again, and I'll, I'll kind of go uh, through them one by one with a few tips. All right, so the first one, uh, pretty straightforward. The price of gold increases by 2.5% every year. Uh, if you own $1,000 worth of gold today, how much will it be worth when you graduate college? So what you're trying to figure out is how much it's worth when you graduate. Okay, so a couple things you, you might know when you graduate is going to be in a certain number of years. Let's say you're 18, so that would make it in four years. And now you can write yourself a, an expression to calculate this. So you currently have something that's worth 1,000. Now it increases by 2.5% every year. So you have the 1, which represents the amount that is currently present and you have 2.5% which is 0 to 5, 1.025 and the exponent will tell you the number of time periods so to the fourth power. Okay, And then you can go ahead and compute that. Uh, for number 2 we want to see if this equation makes sense. So we kind of want to go through it step by step, right? We have a price of a house, cost 200000 and we want to know if this will allow us to predict the upcoming prices. So it increases by 6% every five years. So let's first think about what would happen after one year. Well, I would take 200,000 and I would multiply it by what? Well, I need to multiply it not by 0 0.06, but by 1.06. So I would change this to 1.06 because I need to have a a 1 there, that will, when I multiply by 200,000, will keep the original 200,000, and then by multiplying by 0 0.06, will add the 6%. Now, the T here represents the number of years that have elapsed. So let's just think about this. If one year has elapsed, do I want to increase it by 6%, right? If this exponent is 1, right, if T is 1, then that means that one year has gone by, my exponent is 1. But think about it, it's every five years. So if one year has elapsed, that's one out of five. So this t needs to be divided by five. So instead of t, I'm going to have t divided by five because I'm not going to actually multiply by 1.06 until five years have gone by. So five over five would be one. Number three, um, a chemical C6O3 decreases by 21% every day. By the way, I have no idea if this is a real chemical. Um, after three days, how much is left? And so remember, what we're doing is we're taking some initial amount and we're going to multiply it by some number. And that's going to allow us to figure out kind of how much is left. And that number is going to be um, the, the growth rate or the factor um, to the power of the, the number of time periods. So here it's decreasing by 21%. So every day I'm going to multiply it by what? Well, if you're losing 21%, then you're only going to have 79% left over, so 0.79 every day. And so for three days, I'll multiply that 
three times, so it would be 0.79 to the third, and then I'll get some decimal, and that can allow me to figure out the percentage that's left over. For B, how long will it take for there to be 5% of the chemical remaining? Well, now I know that, let's say I started with some number A, some amount A, to get 5% remaining, I've got to multiply it by 0 0.05. So in other words, I'm wondering, what do I have to do, 0 0.79, to what power, so I'll just put x in there, will give me a times 0 0.05, right? And what this is saying is, what do I, you know, I, I know I have some amount, and I want it to eventually be multiplied by 0 0.05. I don't really need the a there, I just wanted to show you that. And so now I can solve for x, and we need to do that by taking the natural log of both sides. Of course, to check that your answer is correct, make sure that it makes sense in the context of the question before you write it out. Number four, the half-life of a particular radioactive isotope is 3,500 years, 3,500. How much of the substance will be left over after two centuries? So it's important to note how long a century is, right? The 19th century, 20th century, right? Um, or just uh, think about um, per cent is one every hundred. A century is 200 years. Um, it's, it's not actually uh, that long. Um, so that, that's an important thing to think about. This is, would be 200 years. OK, so um, now you're wondering how much will be left over after that amount of time. So think about it. How many half-lives have gone by in 200 years? Well, not, not even close to one, right? Specifically, how much? Well, a half-life is 3,500 years. You've gone 200. So 200 divided by 3,500, OK? So to, I'm going to go ahead and work up here. Uh, to figure this out, right, you're going to think about, OK, well, half of it decomposes every 3,500 years. How much do I have? Well, I have 200 out of the 3,500. Okay, And so that's going to tell me how much of it is left over, some percentage. How many half-lives will it take for the substance to decay to 1% of its original amount? So here, I want to know when you know, my 0.5 to some exponent is going to equal 0 0.01, right, 1%. Now, it's important to note here, I want to know how many years, not necessarily how many, uh, I'm sorry, I want to know how many half-lives, right? So I can just use an exponent of x here. I don't actually have to put it over 3,500 because I'm asking myself how many half-lives, how many time periods, and this will tell me how many time periods. Um, so say it were three time periods, that would be three times 3,500 years. And then see how long will it take for the isotope to vanish completely. I want you to think about that yourself, kind of work it out, and come prepared with an answer.